This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 12. For anyone that's listening, don't discount your idea because you think, oh, it's already out there or someone could just find this out by Googling. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soul. Welcome to another episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is episode number 12, and today's guest is Amanda Berlin. Amanda is an entrepreneur and content creating specialist and expert. Content is crucial when it comes to online marketing and when it comes to entrepreneurship in general. And today, Amanda will be sharing amazing strategies and tips on that very subject. Enjoy today's episode. Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the Extra Paycheck Podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me. Let's begin with you telling us a little bit more about you, your personal story, and the story of your business. Sure. So I grew up in northern New Jersey, and I went to college in Washington, D.C., where I studied journalism. And I had always had it in my head that I wanted to go into television or the news. I really loved current events. And I love the news. I didn't love politics, which made me like kind of a bit of an outsider in Washington, D.C. But um, I studied journalism and, and graduated college. And then I moved back up to New York City, uh, near where I grew up, not too far. And I moved without a job and without, um, without anywhere to live. I, j- I actually shared an apartment with my cousin for a year. And I started working at a um, an internal uh, kind of like intranet cable news show at Merrill Lynch, where uh, this was before the recession, before the financial crisis, before 9-11, before everything. And they were just, I guess, flush with enough cash that they had their own internal news cable station that was broadcast to the trading floor. So I started working in quote unquote news there, but it was kind of like corporate news. It was, uh, you know, financial news that the, that the traders needed to know. So I ended up, um, staying there very, very short time, but I was a production assistant there. And then I went over to another company that specialized in what became the niche of public relations that I, um, that I specialized in, which was, um, broadcast and radio and television publicity. So basically those interview, um, if you ever see an actor doing an interview where he has the same backdrop on various stations, it means that he's doing a press junket. So the, the interviewer comes to him and interviews him and he stays in the same studio the entire time. And he just feels interview after interview after interview. And so that Mm -hmm. was the kind of publicity that we were doing, we were doing it via satellite though. So we would have the talent, the actor or the, uh, you know, personality in our studio. And then we would book them interviews across the country. So no one would have to travel. Everything was done via satellite. And, you know, this, (laughs) this was, you know, 15 years ago at this point. So at, at, uh, in this day and age, they probably, I I've seen them do these things by, via Skype. (laughs) <laughs> and mm-hmm. all digitally. But um, yeah, so that was the style back then and back in the day. <laughs> and so yeah. um, essentially that started me on the road to doing what I now do for entrepreneurs, which is creating a story that sells to the media in terms of, of valuable content, but also communicates the message of whatever talent we have in the chair. So at that time, I was working with really amazing celebrities. So it wasn't that hard of a sell to these television stations to get them to do interviews. But as my career progressed, I started working at larger PR firms and um, with with uh, more corporate clients and, you know, pharmaceutical companies and consumer products, um, less entertainment focused stuff. So the balance between creating a message that would resonate with the audience became much more important. It became much more strategic. And um, to give you an example, 
the, um, you know, we would get like a pharmaceutical company that would come to us and say, hey, we have, we just got FDA approval for this new drug that treat, treats hypertension or whatever. And we hired this doctor from NYU to talk about how great it is. Can you get us on television? <laughs> and at, um, at the end of my corporate career, I was the editorial director for um, for this firm that I was working for. And so it was my job to strategize a story that would play on television and on the radio. So it really would end up being something like, you know, however many millions of people suffer from hypertension, here is here are, you know, eight great tips for reducing the impact of this disease on your life. And then we would weave in this pharmaceutical mention. Um, that's mm -hmm. just an example. So, um, toward the end of my corporate career, I had realized that I felt like that work that I was doing was not making the world a better place. It wasn't like making people's lives better, I guess, by extension, maybe it was getting some valuable information out there. But I felt like I was just helping corporations further their, you know, fiscal causes. <laughs> I wasn't really yeah. improving people's lives. So through a lot of you know, personal development work and a lot of, um, introspection and, um, trying a lot of different things. I can't kind of came around to this, I, this realization really that the series of tasks I was doing on a daily basis to get these corporate entities out there in front of the media, I could teach entrepreneurs how to do that for themselves. Um, how they can. So basically what I do today is teach entrepreneurs how to create their message, how to create their platform, and how to position themselves as an expert and deliver a message and, you know, help help them craft a message that resonates with the audience that they need to connect with in order to get their name out there and get more clients and get more sales and so on. Mm -hmm. And is that creating content that connects? Yeah. So as a extension of that, I created this online course that you just mentioned, Create Content That Connects, that uh, draws people through that process of creating your creating your message, writing your website content that so that it it's coherent with that message. Um, it takes them takes them through basically everything from writing your about page to writing and conceiving of your services to writing all the fine print on your website. So how do you create those call to action buttons to get people to sign up or buy what kind of verbiage actually works in that regard? And then into more dynamic content, like how to blog strategically. So how to come up with ideas of things to write about for your blog. So you're constantly generating content, but also you're generating content that's useful to your audience. That's really the main goal. It's not just about, you know, writing about what you did today or whatever. It's not a journal, it's a strategic blog. So, um, draw, um, guiding people through that and then how to promote your content, how to write your newsletter and how to get your name out there via guest posting and booking interviews. There's a whole pitching tutorial in there as well. So yeah, that was kind of a labor of love over the course of um, a couple years because I also had a baby in, in the mix <laughs> while I was working on that. Um, but yeah, that was um, something that I created that I launched at the beginning of this year. Oh, so it's just fresh, fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool. Uh, awesome. And this is Oh, so important in online business, right? Proper content and properly crafted content and properly distributed content. It, it could actually it could make or break your business, Completely. especially if you're just starting. Um, I'm actually I found I found out about you because I found your tutorial on creating the about me page. Uh huh for a blog because right. I was actually looking for that. You know, I had my about me page and it was uh, I guess the very typical, hey, I'm Alex and I have an online business and I, I do awesome stuff that I like doing. You right. Know? <laughs> and it's, yeah, so eventually I 
I don't know how. Actually, I was doing redesign, like full redesign of my website in about in um, December, January, January of this year, actually, 2015. And it wasn't just the redesign as to make it look better, but to make it function better yeah. and to change all the content as well, right. you know. Uh, so I stumbled yeah. upon that page, the About Me page, and I, I read it and I was like, who cares? <laughs> like people, people don't care that you do what you like to do it's kind of you know it's too empty and it's too yeah so in my opinion the about me page is there to tell your readers why they should be on your website yeah yeah i completely agree i always say the about page is not really about you <laughs> it's re it has to be about you to an extent but primarily it really needs to be about what you do and the results you deliver to your client it's almost like it kind of has to show them not that you know yourself, but that you know them. Yeah, totally. And I, I did like, I think, three first days of your tutorial, uh -huh. which is a shame. I'm sorry, I didn't finish it. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I'll, have I'll to ask you more about that after. <laughs> yeah. So that I can improve it. <laughs> yeah, I, I will actually go through the whole thing and uh, I'll post the results. Well, you know what I'm talking about. And I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, okay, so my question is, how did you manage to uh, leave a good career, mm -hmm. right? A, I'm pretty sure well-paid career yeah. in New York City mm -hmm. and jump into the scary unknown entrepreneurship where you have to start from scratch and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills by tomorrow. How did you decide on that? Um, I'm still deciding every day. <laughs> wow. I still, I, I, I'm sort of joking when I say that, but yeah, it is a really big decision and it's really high pressure, especially uh, for me having a small child and living in Manhattan, you know, it's very um, expensive. But, um, I did, so I had mentioned that for a long time, I really, or maybe I didn't mention this for a long time. I knew that I wanted to do something different, uh, with my career. I didn't, I could not figure out though, what that thing was going to be. So I sort of just sat there for probably about three years in my corporate job, knowing that I wanted to leave and just not, and just being too scared because Primarily, I didn't have clarity on what I was going to do. Um, so as time progressed and the economy got worse and the company was kind of floundering, I got let go through downsizing. So mm -hmm. that was sort of my, you know, my uh, cue to go for it in my, you know, in my, on my own. So it wasn't so much that I made the decision without any prompting, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, um, you know, that I did make the conscious decision that I'm not going to go get another job like the one that I had. So I started figuring out like, what can I, what can I do? What, what, what will someone pay me for? <laughs> <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. And so I dabbled in a couple of different things, including, um, I did a life coach training and I did, I pursued teaching fitness a little bit because I really love, um, I love fitness and none of it was like clicking for me at, to the point where, you know, I would pour a lot of time and effort into studying these things and getting certified and all of that. And then doing them and realizing like, Oh no, this is not doing it for me. Like I'm not happy doing this. So, um, ultimately it came to the point where I was about, I'm trying to think probably like four months pregnant and I knew I needed to do something to, like stabilize my income a little bit. And I applied for, well, I, I reached out to someone that I knew that worked at, um, that was the director of a nonprofit organization here in the city that offers, um, like holistic learning classes, like in meditation and nutrition and all these different things, um, through this nonprofit that they run. And, I asked him if they, I told him, you know, this is what I used to do in my old corporate career. I think that I can help you guys. Do you have any need for someone like me? And he said to me, you know, 
we really need someone to help us with list building. <laughs> and I was like, I can, pr it, the way he said it was funny because it, it seemed like he had just read about it in like marketing news today or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, it was like his new vocab word. But, um, yeah. I said, you know, I think I can, I totally can help you with that. And so he sent me a request for a proposal, which I started filling out. And when I, well, when I first got it, I was kind of like, why do I have to, I was kind of like mad about it. Like, why do I have to fill this out? You know, just hire me. I told you what I do. I have 12 years of experience doing this and filling it out was a really excellent exercise for me because I realized that that was what I was getting excited about that kind of work, that kind of communications work where I was going to be doing this work for an institution that I really believed in that I knew I would be helping and I could get creative within those confines with, you know, the tactics that I would help them with and all that. And that was like such an aha moment for me because I was, I was all of a sudden acquainted with like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like it wasn't that I needed to run away from that old career. I just needed to be doing it in a different context. Yeah. Yeah, totally understand. And that was it, <laughs> right? That was, I guess that was your very first client. Did you actually sign that client? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. I worked okay. with them. Um, the organization is called the New York Open Center. And I, I signed them for a year-long contract. And I worked with them from, I actually ended up working with them from March 2013 until September 2014. And we did a whole website overhaul, new logo, new uh, communication strategy, new newsletter strategy, everything. So it was really gratifying and I think it helped them a lot. Oh, that's really awesome. And it's, it's nice how that one uh, single client, one single sale could actually change your life. I'm sure you yeah. would have done it anyway, but for a lot of people and I'm including myself in that a lot of people uh -huh. <laughs> when you when you try to start something especially service based for clients and you pitch and like you put everything in your first pitch right. everything mm -hmm. and you send it to them and they're like mm, no thank you <laughs> you know yeah. it's it's hard to go on at, at at the very beginning you just sit there with your mouth open and you're like how how could they not hire me right right <laughs> how, I'm good, and I wrote a really good page. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm, um, yeah, it's it's interesting that yeah, you you know you get your first client, and then you just kept on going, and this is what you do full time now, I guess, right? right? This is your main business. Yeah, and I two things about that. The first thing is that I firmly believe, and I do this for anyone that I have the prospect of working with. I put all my ideas into that proposal. And I even, I even said this to someone uh, earlier this week who I was talking to um, that I was going to deliver a proposal to. I'm like, you're going to get a lot of value out of my, just my proposal that you could probably take it and implement it yourself <laughs> and, you know, and, and be fine. You know, I provide great guidance and accountability for, for, putting all of these things into action and certainly a lot of brain power that you wouldn't have if, if you just took the ideas. But I don't believe that there's like the ideas are, are not proprietary because there's an, there's an endless well of ideas and I can freely share them because I, because I know the, the worth of having me on your side as you go through the process. But um, but yeah, I think that pouring your heart and soul into your proposals is absolutely what you should be doing. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is that, oh, was, I almost forgot the thought, but it's about, um, charging. Um, when you, when, when you put yourself out there as a service provider and you're charging what you know your worth and what the, what you, what the work is worth to you to engage your time and effort, I think when people say no or they say it's too pricey or whatever, 
it's easier to walk away because you're like, well, you know what? That's what it's worth to me. You know, like it's not going to be worth it to me to work with you for $5 an hour or something absurd like that. It's not going to be, you're not going to get the best of me. I'm going to be resentful. It's like, it's a great argument for charging what you want to charge because then you approach the work with better energy. I don't know if that's too like out there for people, but you just, you're not like angry when you're working with someone who, who doesn't value you and it's not worth it to you to be doing the work for the, the fee that they're paying you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. And what you mentioned about putting your heart into your proposal, um, another point that I see in this, if you send that kind of very detailed proposal with an actual plan of action yeah. right, to your clients and they just steal it and they start implementing it. You no, know, I think to myself, this client is not working with, you know, if right. they do that to you, then I'm like, well, thank God I didn't sign yeah. them because probably <laughs> there would have been a pain to work with. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's a no, it's a, um, it's a character. Uh, it's like a note about their character. If someone does that. Yeah. And we have, uh, I've tried to, well, I did offer services such as web design in Montreal a long time ago. Okay. And I often had clients who, let's say, quoted $2,000 for projects, mm-hmm. and they would call me back, and they're like, we love it, we love your ideas, we love your proposal, we'll give you 200 bucks." <laughs> right. Right? And even though those moments when I offered those services, it was the very beginning of my um, internet marketing career, uh-huh. let's say, right? So I was really uh, cash trapped and I, I was desperate for money, but I still didn't take those jobs because I was like, well, you know, this project is expensive and they're requiring me, it would take at least, you know, 40, 50 hours of my time minimum. Right. And they offer me two hundred dollars. I'm like, regardless of how much I need that money, I just can't sign sign on clients like that because I know that, uh, well, from re- reading some books and you know speaking to people who offer services, I also discovered that someone who's trying to bring your price down by that much, it's usually a client that will double and triple the time that you invest into right. the project without paying you any extra. Right. Yeah. So you end up you end up paying them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> in a way, right? Exactly. Yeah. I just know that. I am more than happy to walk away from a deal that just doesn't feel like that doesn't feel right. But particularly in the realm of like, I know that if I engage in this, I'm going to be wrung dry. (laughs) Yeah. You just stole the phrase from my mouth. That was exactly what I was going to say. If it doesn't feel right, just, you know, probably it's not. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And that's true in so many areas. <laughs> uh, great. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about content just later, but mm-hmm. let's start with a question that um, people seem to enjoy he- yeah. hearing, although it's not a really good one. <laughs> we always speak about success and moving on and uh, making progress. But the question is about um Failure, not exactly failure, but about a moment, one of the hardest moments that you had in your entrepreneur journey, if you had one, maybe the moment where you felt like giving up your journey and just getting another job and moving on. Have you had such a moment? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of Absolutely. course. Like everybody. Uh-huh. And what was it? Let's let's hear it. Yeah. So Right before I got in touch with that um, gentleman that I knew at the New York Open Center, I had applied for a position there where I would have been, I applied for, basically I had mentioned it's an educate, it was, it is an educational institution. So they employ registrars, people to answer the phone, answer questions about the courses, register people for the courses, take credit card information, you know, very clerical administrative type of position. Um, and I had noticed that they had a posting on their website for, um, you know, an hourly position as a registrar part time. And I actually put my application in for that because I was, you know, with good intentions, like, okay, a couple hours a week, you know, 10, 20 hours a week. Sounds good, a little extra cash. And it's at an organization that I really like, and I would like going there. And it's a good community and so on. 
But I, in retrospect, I realized that I was, you know, I, I kind of convinced myself that I wasn't throwing in the towel, but I was sort of throwing in the towel because I was about to take a job that really utilized very few of my skills and talents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that seemed like a real low point to me, but it led to that other moment that was kind of my epiphany. So, um, so that's, I think that's kind of the takeaway is that I firmly believe in community and talking to people that, you know, because you re I think that everyone likes to help each other. I think that that's like a, just a, an intrinsic, you know, human tendency is that we want to help. And if you, if you think about who, you know, and ask around and enlist people as your allies, I think that that can really yield some amazing things. Yeah, totally agree with you. So when I had approached my, that, um, that guy who is the executive director of the open center, I originally mm -hmm. approached him because I had applied for that registrar job and I said, yeah. Um, oh, hey, I put my application in for registrar. I don't know if you can, you know, look for it or do anything for me. And, and then I told, and then it just started a conversation about what else I do. And it led to that, that big contract. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're trying to get a job. And this is when he told you that there's this new awesome thing called list right. building. <laughs> they need some help. Right. <laughs> exactly. Great. See, yeah, that's that's actually pretty cool. And it surprises me because it happens rather often mm -hmm. that I hear entrepreneurs who um, have a very similar story as in when one of their lowest points made them realize something really huge mm -hmm. or make, made them, you know, succeed at something really big. And, you know, like they say, sometimes you really have to hit the bottom. Right. Oh, completely. So understand your potential and understand, yeah. 100%. <laughs> awesome. So let's get into uh, content. Okay. I'm thinking of a right question to ask you, and I'm not sure which because I have like a million questions for you about content. So uh, maybe let's concentrate on a blog. Mm. Uh, well, let's say a website, which we use to communicate with, with our audience and sell our, our products right. or uh, our service, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Would you have like a list of five most crucial things content-wise that you should do on that blog or something of that sort? Just some like really important guidelines that you would say should be really, really um, taking well care of. On the website in general or specifically on the blog? I would say on a blog rather than a blog. Okay. Um, yeah. So I would say that, and this is, this is an interesting question and really great and specific because, um, in my course in create content that connects, we devote two whole modules to blogging. So, you know, it's, I, I think I'm going to take this question from two perspectives and that sure. is how to, what, are good I what is a good idea in terms of a blog article what's a good article idea and then mm -hmm. we'll talk about what to how to structure that idea so that it becomes strategically relevant to your business so in terms of ideas what I would say is that the best ideas are going to be specific and they're going to be relevant to your audience. So let's say that, so for my audience, I'm talking to entrepreneurs. And so recently I just did a, um, a webinar on how to pitch yourself for blog, uh, guest blog opportunities on other people's websites, on other, you know, on, on online magazines and stuff like that to get your name out there and how to pitch yourself for interviews. So I, I developed this whole, this whole, um, you know, this whole keynote that I delivered via the webinar. And as I was going back into my material, I realized that, and this is true for, for anyone, not just for me, that everything that I, every bullet point in, in my keynote, every subcategory that I talked about could be its own article. So that's what I talk about. That's what I'm sort of talking about in terms of getting specific. So I, I talked about how to find relevant 
outlets to pitch yourself for guest blog opportunities. And I talked about finding um, where your competitors have pitched, have contributed, where um, the sites that you love to read as, as a consumer. And then this last one was determining your, like your micro niches. So like I'm a mom and I'm also an entrepreneur. So one of my micro niches would be moms. <laughs> one of my other micro niches might be fitness because I love fitness. So, you know, like how to balance your, your, uh, fitness routine with your life as an entrepreneur or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I could take out of all three of those bullet points, you know, finding out where your competitors pitch, I could take each one of those and make each one of those into an article in and of itself. And that's how you, that's an example of how you can get really specific with your content. Um, the, the, um, basically the idea is to talk to a very specific point that your audience is dealing with. It could be, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, ideas are limitless because you can get down to this micro level of like, I, I think I wrote a blog once about how to write a single sentence, like the single sentence that you're right, you know, you're writing the wrong way or whatever it was. Uh -huh. So you can really get, I would recommend like taking a hard look at your topics and really trying to get as specific as you can with each idea. So that's one way to come up with ideas. And I could actually give you, um, I, I think that I have written articles on how to come up with blog ideas. So I could give you those to post on, you know, if you do a show notes page to post on, on the, on the page, if that would be useful for fear the record. That would be really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. Okay, good. And so, so that's the first thing is you want to come up with ideas that are specific, that are relevant and that are service based. I think that's also something really to focus on that you want to be giving away content that is useful and you and something that that provides information that your audience can implement without, you know, much not not without much effort, but something that they can implement into their lives so that your your insight is news they can use essentially to borrow a phrase from, you know, the television news. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think that actually is probably the most important thing in terms of tone is that you want your articles to be service based news you can use. So like you really see that everywhere in consumer media, you know, it's like, you know, three easy ways to lose 10 pounds before July 4th or four tips for, um, you know, soundproofing your windows, I say, as a siren goes by my door, <laughs> my window, <laughs> um, you know, it, it could be anything, but it's like those tip oriented articles are really useful to people. And that's what, that's what also positions you as an expert and as an authority in your space. Mm -hmm. uh, great tips. And I'm actually thinking at this moment, uh, the tip that you mentioned about getting into specifics, mm -hmm. I've noticed um, a lot more activity, let's say, in shares and likes on my own blog uh, posts, uh -huh. the ones that do exactly that, the ones that go uh, specifically into, um, let's say, I would explain to people how to create your own pictures for your Amazon listings without hiring a photographer. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a great article idea. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, it, it is actually very specific yeah. because it talks about the platform that they use, right. which is being Amazon. No, you could say like how to make pictures for selling stuff online. Right. Mm -hmm. But that that could be good too. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not as specific. Right. And I see a difference. Uh, yeah, like one of the latest articles I wrote is actually... Almost eight thousand words. Wow, that's like a <laughs> that's think? like a little novella. <laughs> yeah, actually, it is, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's less of a blog post. It's more of a tutorial on how to start a podcast. Oh, okay, great, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure so that's my super useful. Yeah, my whole goal of writing that content was that, um, well, because a lot of the a lot of us we we tend to either, well, we tend to procrastinate. Mm -hmm. When we don't know yes. um, where to begin, especially, right? Completely. When we have too many things to do. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, so I've decided to, because I've done that when I was first researching how to start a podcast, and finally I thought, well, I'll write this article which will cover every single uh, technical point, at least, of starting a podcast, mm -hmm. at least in, in, in my case, like the way I did it. Because, you know, you could use different platforms and different microphones and different everything. Right. And I told people, I'm not going to compare... 20 microphones in this blog post i'll tell you which one i use right. because it works for me and if you read through the whole post you could start your own podcast tonight right so you don't have to waste time researching how to create a feed how to create this what kind of mic you know i was like it's all there maybe it's not the best uh, tools that i'm using but they do work for me and that's what i use take it one by one and you don't need any other information you could start right now yeah Completely. Um, I've heard people say yeah. that over and over again, that content, you know, like you're, you, like you just said, you're not, you're not inventing the wheel here. You know, this may not be the, it probably is a, a, is a great way to start a podcast, but it's all information that they could find if they were willing to do the research, but people will buy or, you know, in this case, consume your, your content if you've done the work for them. You've done the work of doing the research and compiling all the information in one place. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that the takeaway also, in addition to, like, you know, provide great service-based content is that don't, you know, for anyone that's listening, don't discount your idea because you think, oh, it's already out there or someone could just find this out by Googling enough. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And, you know, the, the same thing is uh, with content, let's say. Mm -hmm. You could find everything, but the thing is, if you stumble upon a great course that teaches you how to, let's say, optimize content for your website mm -hmm. or how to create good content, right? Right. It could be so much more useful. And I think it's not just that it's useful, that it'll move you forward yeah. a lot faster because... Uh, if I'm starting from scratch, I don't know anything about writing content, right? Creating blog posts. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I have to find the, about the whole process of creating a blog post. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I make a few. They don't do too well. And then I find out somewhere, oh, my God, your headline or your subject right. is really, really important. And you have to concentrate on that. Then I have to do another research on how to write a proper headline. Right. Mm-hmm. My article does a bit better, but still not good. Then I'm like, oh, my God. Well... My, let's say, headline is amazing, but <laughs> the content is not really relevant or, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, there's always so many things to research. And I think the hard part is not knowing where, what to search for. Yeah. And also, how long are you really going to stick with that if you're kind of, you know, like shooting for the target and consistently like missing by a, a couple inches? If you're going to, you have to have amazing like mental fortitude and <laughs> and like um what's the word persistence to yeah. continue trying and trying and trying and I think also to a point that you made earlier when you um oh my god it just left my mind the point oh the about the fear of putting yourself out there when you, I know you know I hear this all the time that it's really scary when you don't really know what you're doing to put it out there because not because you're, you know, not because you're opening yourself up to anything, you know, drastic or, or, you know, life threatening, but like, there's just this natural human instinct to be like, well, I want this to be good. And I just don't know, like, if I hit send on this pitch or on this newsletter, am I going to look like a fool? Because I didn't do it the right way. And if you have someone or you have a tutorial that kind of guides you through the, the specifics for optimizing whatever it is that you're putting out there, you can put yourself out there with a lot more confidence. Yeah, this is the scary truth about <laughs> a lot of, a lot of uh, entrepreneur moments mm -hmm. where exactly you, it's really scary to uh, start something new that you don't know exactly how it's done. But you know how I usually calm myself down and this is what I recommend to everyone who's listening to this podcast right now. If it has been done, it's possible. Right. Why not you? Right. right? Come Others are doing it. So can you? Absolutely. Right. That's so funny. That reminds me of the time I told you that I moved to New York City and I had I always had family that lived here, but I never I never lived here myself and I never um, took the subway 
but you know, by myself or anything. And I moved, uh-huh. to, I moved to New York and I lived with my cousin and I had to take the subway down to the world financial center where Merrill Lynch was at the time. And I was like, Tracy, I don't, what, I don't know what to do. Like what train do I take? I'm nervous. She's like, Amanda, far dumber people than you take the subway every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have applied that in so many ways and have told other people that in so many different contexts. And it's so, it's totally true in, in any in any realm you could possibly think of other people have done it and you may have something on them that you're not even aware of. You, you can do it too. (laughs) Yeah, that is great advice. (laughs) And I've, I've taken, I've been to New York city maybe 10 times Mm -hmm. or so. Uh, let's say in the past 10 years, I'm not sure exactly. And I get your (laughs) your problem because even every, if I go tomorrow to New York city, I would, still go down that that staircase <laughs> to go to the metro and I'll still be like take a deep breath and be like okay let's try to figure out Lately. where I'm going <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's always true whenever you go whenever you whenever I've used public transportation in a foreign city or foreign country I've always felt that way it's very nerve-wracking <laughs> yeah it is uh, okay uh wow we've been on for about 40 minutes and it feels like we just spoke for five yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i still have so many questions but uh it's time to wrap it up soon so what i wanted to ask you oh yeah another question this is really important and a lot of people who do online business would really benefit from your answer <gasps> when starting or running <laughs> building a list <laughs> something brand new you've heard of that right? <laughs> heard of it heard of it building a list <laughs> can you provide like one really important tips or maybe two tips of the kind of content that you should put in your actual email messages that you're sending out to your list yeah so the way that i i kind of think i have like an easy hack for newsletters and that is that they should be timed with your blog so i think i'm a proponent of delivering useful content on a regular basis. So um, just going back to the second part of that blog question, because we never got to how to what to include in your article. So I just want to give like, a oh, my God, quick, totally. Yeah, quick rundown so that no one is left hanging. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you never answered that second part of that question. Um, but yeah, so and then I'll come back to how I see blogs integrating with newsletters. So I think it will all work. So um, in terms of what your article, kind of the composition of your blog article. I actually still love that old five paragraph essay structure from high school. (laughs) And, Mm -hmm. you know, you kind of like have a catchy intro, something personal, maybe about, about why you chose this topic. And that's also something you can reserve if you want and not put in the article, but included in your newsletter potentially. Um, And I'll talk about that when we talk about newsletters. So you're going to have, you know, your thesis and your, your, your subject, your thesis, and then your, your points. And within those points, I want you to always include tips, which is what we talked about. So, you know, your article may be, you know, the five essential tools you need for delivering great audio to your audience via your podcast. And then you'll have those five tools kind of like, the title, the idea, the way that we were talking about it being specific and being service oriented kind of leads you down the road of what you need to include in your article. But then also at the end, what I also think you should include is requesting engagement and feedback from your audience. So you can end with something like, did you implement one of these strategies? Tell me how it worked out for you. Do you have a better idea? I'd love to hear it. Leave your response in the comments below. So Um, those are what I consider kind of the essential include essential inclusions for blog articles. So you want it to be straightforward. You want it to be personal. You want it to have tips, offer tips, and you want to encourage engagement. So that, Mm -hmm. that's the, um, that would be the structure that I would recommend for writing strategically for your blog. And then the way I see is best to communicate with your list on a regular basis, which I think is important as you're building your list 
is by taking the content that you've written for your blog and pushing it out to your audience. So don't ever write a blog and just let it languish on your site. You need to let people know that it's there. So the best thing to do is to use it as newsletter content. And by that, I mean, I don't mean copy and paste it into your newsletter. I mean, take your blog idea and put a little twist on it or, you know, like I said, write some kind of unique piece of content that just goes in your newsletter. Like the reason why you thought this would be a great topic to write about. That's always something that's kind of interesting to put in your newsletter because it gives your readers a little bit of a personal insight into you and what's going on in your life. And then it can be really short and sweet. So, you know, that original content and a link to the article, like here's why I, or, you know, you could even write something like, you know, I was having a horrible time figuring out how to, uh, how to deliver great audio. So I tried all of these things and I did this research and or you could even tell an anecdote about, you know, that about the worst time or whatever, and put that in the newsletter with a link. You know, if you want to find out the five essential tools for delivering great audio, click here. And I feel like that I would, I'm not even a podcaster and I would be interested in that <laughs> because of the way it's yeah. delivered. Um, and then also in your newsletter, I think that you need to include a a block that speaks to what you are providing as your services, reminding people that you're in business and this is what you can do to help support them. So there's maybe a block at the bottom that says, you know, interested in working with me, click here, or here's what I can help you with and some bullet points of what your core competencies are and click here to your, you know, services page on your website. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea, actually. Uh, I think I, I think I do, in most of my emails, I tell people that if they have any questions that they should email me at such and such address. Right. But I think I would expand on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would add a few more things in there. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for your advice, Amanda. Really great tips. And uh, I, I think people should really check out what you do to get better ideas and as I've mentioned even in the emails that I sent you before this interview that people who work online and do any kind of online or internet business or even an offline business but does have a website right. create uh, creating proper content is like probably the most important thing out there I completely agree uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I agree also because it's really your um it's, it's your, it's your online business card. It's your portrait to the world. So you have, you actually have a say in how you're positioned, what your business looks like, the impression that they get, because that you're creating all this, you're putting it out there. It's, it's not, you know, it's not an assumption. It's your statement. So, um, it is really important to be clear about who you are, about what you do, about why you're the perfect person to be doing what you're doing and communicating that in an effective way. So, uh, Amanda, where could the listeners of this show go to find out more about creating amazing content? So you can go to my website, which is amandaberlin.com. And there's a link there to my course, but there's also a designated site for the course called createcontentthatconnects.com. Really awesome stuff. And I'll ask you for another thing if you know the link to share because I'll write all of that in the show notes but some people won't go to show notes and I want them still to hear this um, URL so they could maybe you know mm -hmm. go directly from their phone or wherever they're listening to the podcast. Great. You have a really good course on uh, creating a good con uh, not contacts. You have a really good course on creating a proper about me right. page mm -hmm. for your website. What is the URL to that course, which is free, by the way? Yes, it's free. I have to check the exact URL. I'm going there right now. AmandaBerlin.com slash write a compelling about page. That's it's it. It's all in like one word. Write right? a compelling about page. Okay, that's one word. awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. I hope, yeah, I hope people will go and enjoy that. And uh, yeah, it's, well, see, I, it's a combination of video and um, and worksheets, so it's super user friendly. Yeah, that's that. That's actually the awesome part. <laughs> Thank you. 
video come on how can you do without video in 2015 right? <laughs> well, i'm glad i have video since you said that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go all right amanda it was really a pleasure to have you on the podcast thank you so much for coming on and sharing all your amazing tips and your so in such inspiring story thank you thank you alex for all the work that you're doing and for inviting me on the show and it was a great conversation i really enjoyed it Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. You can go to extrapodcast.com slash 12 to find the show notes for today's episode. This is where I'll be sharing all the links, uh, resources, and other things that we talked about in today's episode. Once again, thank you so much for leaving me reviews on iTunes Store. Those reviews help a lot and they keep me staying motivated. If you haven't already, you could simply go to extrapodcast.com forward slash iTunes, rate my show and leave a review for the Extra Paycheck Podcast. And I'll see you next Monday.